East. Now a new season is upon us, and it has started out to be the year of the Atlantic Coast Conference. The Duke Blue Devils won the Big Apple NIT by defeating Kansas in the title game, as David Henderson captured the MVP award by scoring 30 points. But he was by no means a whole show. Duke's great backcourt tandem of Johnny Dawkins and Tommy Amaker also played superbly. But Duke isn't the only conference powerhouse. On the contrary, the ACC has three top five teams in the current AP poll. Not ranked, but just as impressive early have been Terry Holland's Virginia Cavaliers. The first of their four straight wins was an eye-popping 92-77 victory over Houston. The guard play, an area of concern when the season started, has been good. The backcourt starters, Tom Calloway and Derek Sims, and they've been able to direct Virginia's new up-tempo style of play, an approach that has seen the Cavaliers average some 85 points per game. Tonight, we'll turn the first page in a very important seasonal chapter. That would entitle ACC Conference Play. It's the Blue Devils and the Cavaliers, and it's coming up next from Cameron Indoor Stadium. Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions presents exclusive live coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference basketball. Tonight in the opening game of the ACC season, live from Cameron Indoor Stadium in Durham, North Carolina, it's the Virginia Cavaliers versus the Duke Blue Devils. Tonight's live coverage is brought to you by Budweiser, by NCNB, by Piedmont Airlines, by the Jefferson Pilot Companies, by South Carolina National, by Subaru, by Food Lion, and by Central Fidelity. Cameron Indoor Stadium on the campus of Duke University, the scene tonight of the first matchup in Atlantic Coast Conference play in this 1985-86 basketball season, and a matchup of unbeaten clubs, the Duke Blue Devils against the Cavaliers of the University of Virginia. Good evening, everyone. I'm Marty Brenneman. Pleased to have you with us tonight, along with Billy Packer. Billy, two unbeaten ball clubs. You surprised? I'm surprised at one thing. I'm surprised that Duke is undefeated, and I say that because of the real grind they went through in the NIT. Having to go up in New York and play against two outstanding teams coming back with two wins is an excellent job. I am not surprised Virginia's undefeated. I think they're one of the most underrated ball clubs in the country. And of course, Virginia's been faced early by Olden Polonies. Uh, they shocked a lot of people when they went up to Landover and, and handily knocked off that Houston ball club. Yeah, I was surprised at the score of that ball game. But in Olden Polonies, they have a fellow that they brought to Virginia to rebound and play defense. He has made incredible strides offensively in regard to his total part of his game. Right now, he's one of the best all-around centers in the country. Billy, the Duke Ball Club, people would say a veteran club, and it is a veteran club, with one big exception on that front line in highly talented freshman Danny Perry. Well, Danny Perry, not only highly talented, but I think he's one of those young men that is at the right place at the right time. Duke needed his size. He needed passing ability. He blends in beautifully with the veterans that they have. And he's going to get an opportunity to play without the pressure, which is a real good thing for a young freshman. This is a better ball club with Perry starting and Billis getting healthy and now coming off the bench? Well, it gives Coach Jay an awful lot of flexibility in his lineup, makes that bench deeper. He knows what he can get out of Jay Billis. And right now, Billis is capable probably of playing three to four minutes at a time. So I think it puts Duke in very good position. Well, you hear the enthusiasm. It is typical Duke fandom here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. We're looking for an interesting night of basketball. We're glad you're with us. And we'll be back with more pregame action right after this from Budweiser. To you by Mazda Cars and Trucks. Billy, Virginia, tough chore coming in here to try and beat Duke on their home turf. Uh, what do they got to do to enhance their chances of winning? Well, a couple of things, in my opinion. One, they want to get the ball to Olden Polonies early in the ball game. Try to build up some fouls on Duke. Try to get the inside game going so the outside can be exposed later. I think the other thing you have to do when you play against Duke, and this is almost impossible because that backcourt tandem of Dawkins and Amaker is so good, but you have to try to control them somewhat so they just don't take over the ball game. That is very difficult to do. As far as Duke is concerned and looking to win their eighth straight game. Well, I think an interesting thing tonight for fans in a game like this is how does Jay Billis work in the lineup? Is he a starting player? Is he going to be a sub player? In any case, you know it makes another move that Coach K is going to have to develop in his game plan. So it'll be interesting to watch that. I think they also, every game they play, David Henderson coming off that bench is so explosive, such an outstanding offensive player. He makes things happen, so they want to get him operating early in the ballgame. 
and then they must control against a club like Virginia, the defensive boards. That front line from Virginia has nice size, but more importantly, they really pound you. So I think Duke is going to have to keep them off the board. Well, we'll see how it goes through the first half of play here tonight as Virginia and Square off for the first time in this first conference game of the 85-86 season. The conference standings, of course, all against non-conference competition. That adds up to a record, Billy, of 35-6, and six, counting a Clemson overtime win earlier tonight against South Carolina, a winning percentage of better than 85, and that's not bad. Not bad, and uh, it's something that I think a lot of people expected out of the Atlantic Coast Conference this year. They've played in four tournaments. They've won all four, so they look pretty strong. Four unbeaten ball clubs, of course, as you see, Maryland, Georgia Tech, Wake with only one loss. State struggling a little bit right now, but they played a tough schedule, having faced Kansas and lost at Greensboro this afternoon. And tonight's game plan has been brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks. And we're just about set to go here at Duke. And for the starting lineups of tonight's game, let's go to public address announcer, Dr. Art Chandler. Ladies and gentlemen, your starting lineups for tonight's game. For Virginia, at forward, a 6'5 sophomore from Long Island, New York, number 21, Mel Kennedy. For Duke, at forward, a 6'8 senior from Scottsdale, Arizona, number 32, Mark Allery. For Virginia, at forward, a 6'9 junior from Rochester, New York, Number 22, Tom Sheehy. For Duke, at forward, a 6'5 senior from Drury, North Carolina, number 12, David Henderson. And for Virginia, at center, a 6'11 junior from New York, New York, number 24, Olden Polonies. For Duke, at center, a 6'10 freshman from Bowie, Maryland, number 35, Danny Ferry. For Virginia, at guard, a six-foot junior from Charlottesville, Virginia, number five, Tom Calloway. For Duke, at guard, a 6'2 senior from Washington, D.C., number 24, Johnny Dawkins. For Virginia, at guard, a 6'3 sophomore from Alexandria, Virginia, number 20, Derek Sims. And for Duke, at guard, a 6-foot junior from Falls Church, Virginia, number 4, Tommy Amaker. The head coach for Virginia in his 12th season, Terry Holland. And the head coach for Duke in his 6th season, Mike Krzyzewski. Well, you've seen the starting lineups, the three officials who will be working this first conference game of the season tonight. Lenny Works, he's a man in the middle. On your left, Bobby Taylor. And on your right, John Moreau. We're set to go here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Duke and Virginia will be back with the opening tip-off in Duke University with Billy Packer. I'm Marty Brenneman, and we are ready to tip off the first conference game as you take a look at the matchups. Kennedy, Sheehy, Polonese, Callaway, and Sims for Virginia. Allery Henderson, the rookie Ferry, along with the back corners, Johnny Dawkins, and Tommy Amaker for the Duke Blue Devils. So something has got to give tonight two unbeaten ball clubs. Duke 7-0, having scored wins over three top 20 ball clubs, and the Virginia Cavaliers having won four in a row. Lenny Wirtz will toss it between Polonese and Danny Ferry, and Virginia will have the first go at it. That's Tom Sheehy. Inside pass, and the shot is up, and it's good. Well, Marty, we said they have to go on into Polonese early, and that was the first play of the game, first pass of the game. Got it inside. Virginia starts in the zone. Doesn't take the Cavaliers long to get it down, and now it's Johnny Dawkins pulling the trigger from outside. Just like that, we're tied at two. And Duke picking up early. Great man, a man, a lot of pressure. Amaker, the key to this Duke defense, he picks him up as soon as the inbounds pass is made, as he did just then. Derek Sims. To Kennedy up top as he looks down low. She he wants the ball. They couldn't get it to him. And now they'll try and recycle their offense again. And there's a five-second call. Yeah, the five-second call stays on, even if the man gives up that ball. So good defense by Duke. Good overplay situation. Ball again was trying to go inside the Polonies, but Kennedy couldn't get it in there. There you take a look at the series record. 106 meeting between these two schools. And Mark Allery makes it 4-2 to the home team. Now, Duke is just surrounding that zone and putting up that jumper. 
Virginia's going to have to be a little bit more pressure on the ball. Uh, there's a move inside by Kennedy, and the young man who came off the bench last year seems to have adjusted fairly well to his starting assignment this season. Well, number two behind uh, Dwayne Farrell from Georgia Tech for the freshman of the year last year in the conference. Nice ball movement by Duke. Virginia staying in that zone defense as Duke tries to break the tie and take a two-point lead. There's an interception by Tom Sheehy. So the Blue Devils turn it over, and Virginia has a chance to regain the lead. There's Allery on Colonies on the inside. I'm sure that uh, Coach Krzyzewski felt that he needed Allery's strength. Here's Sheehy. Good move inside. The track failed to go. The tip didn't go, and contact inside, and Curry will be called for the personal foul. And there's another one of our tips at the top of the ball game, and, and the fact that Virginia crashes those offensive boards so well, you've got to put a body on them. Kennedy goes to the boards well, so does Sheehy, and Polonese obviously is tough inside. There was a good drive by Sheehy. Kennedy keeping the ball alive. Two taps, nobody putting the body on him. Gets his third tap up there and foul. Billy, can Virginia pose any great problem for Duke, even though Duke has a great speed in the backcourt because Virginia is playing not a half-court game this season, but an up-tempo style of play themselves on offense? I really believe Virginia is going to give everybody problems this year. Although they're an extremely young team, they don't have a senior on the squad. It's a team that had a lot of experience from last year. They've got good quickness. They'll be a problem. There's another offensive rebound. Kennedy makes one out of two, but Virginia maintains possession of the basketball as they have the lead. We are just barely two minutes into the ball game. The ball goes out of bounds, and it will stay to Virginia as they will trigger off their baseline. Right now, Sheehy is taking it right at Ferry and going by him. Ferry has his hands full there. Sheehy, a forward, obviously. And that, that ball was hit out of bounds by Duke. Happened to hit the official with the ball out of bounds. Good call by Lenny Wirtz. Almost got one in the face. Dave Henderson got a hand on the ball, but it went off Wirtz, and now Sims will trigger for Virginia. Cavaliers in front five to four. Exactly 18 minutes remaining in the first half. Galloway Sims in the backcourt for the Virginia Cavaliers, and traveling call. He made his move. Derek Sims to get the jumper off, and it goes back to Duke. Athletically, the Virginia guards probably going to match up as well with Duke as anybody in, in regard to quickness. Well, that's team one, speed. one area that Terry Holland was very concerned about before the season started. Satisfied that his front line was good enough to compete. And so far, Callaway and Sims have played surprisingly well. And, of course, they had the big outing the last game out in the Roth over BMI from John Johnson off the bench. Dawkins penetrates by Curry. Double pop didn't go. Dawkins stripped for the basketball. Allery picks it up, and he'll have oh, to an no. offensive foul. Offensive foul on Mark Allery. All in Polonese, holding his ground on the inside. That last shot by Danny Ferry that he misses right on the inside. And he was for just a matter of experience. In time, he'll put that ball up strong with two hands, probably pick up a three-point play opportunity there. He let it go early. Second team foul called against Duke. Virginia five, the Blue Devils four, and here come the Cavaliers. Amaker picking up Callaway as he crosses the midcourt line. Kennedy and Henderson, that's a good matchup physically also. Sims stripped of the ball, Amaker lead, pass to Dawkins, you can color that too. Second field goal for Johnny Dawkins, open inside at the other end, Sheehy, he missed it, and Allery clears for the Blue Devils. Good hustle by Danny Ferry. See, he was wide open. Amaker trying to beat the defense down the floor, followed by Henderson. Another push on the inside. Was that Allery trying to get position? No basket. Is Mark Allery. Now the second Duke basket wiped off by an offensive foul, and Allery will come to the Duke bench, and he's not a little bit happy as Jay Phyllis replaces him up front. Now there with Billis uh, back in action now gives the flexibility in that front court that you don't have to get it yourself in a disastrous position if Valerie were in foul trouble without Billis available. Well, it'll be interesting to see how long Billis can go tonight. He went 11, 12 minutes in his first outing of the year against Vanderbilt and picked off six rebounds. Well, now you're going to try to get maybe six, seven minutes out of him. Could be tough. Here's Sheehy getting open on the baseline and a power move by Tom Sheehy left wide open. 
he came to Virginia, he was asked to do an awful lot of scoring. That's a tough thing to do for a freshman. And he kind of went backwards after he started off, but now he's got his whole game in order. And everything that was expected of him is probably coming true. Coming off of a fine sophomore season, Tom Sheehy, and he has scored for the first time tonight. That zone really has some holes in the middle. You'd be surprised to see some people come in the middle and get off some shots. Dawkins got a step on the defense of Derek Sims, and all Sims could do was foul him as Johnny went up for the jump shot. You take a look, the fans take a look at that zone when they see it from the from the upper camera angle, and they'll see a lot of holes right inside the foul line area. You get a fellow like David Henderson flashing on in there and getting the ball, he can really cause problems for that zone. Dawkins, 90% free throw shooter in Duke's first seven ball game. Right now shooting with his first shot for the tie with Virginia in front seven to six. Duke an excellent free throw shooting team, shooting almost 77% as a club. Anything over 70 as a team is good, but when you start pushing 80, you're getting up there as super. And this is a bear. That will not happen very often over the course of the year. Sims cross court. Good defense by David Henderson. Sims penetrating inside. This is shot. There's Perry with good position. He had the rebound and uh, stripped of the ball by C. He was standing on the end line. Well, Danny Perry's getting a real education playing against Virginia because they bang on the inside. They knocked him loose. Timeout on the floor, just under 16 to go, with Virginia holding an early lead over Duke at 7 to 6. We'll be back after this from Bud. Duke University with the Virginia Cavaliers up by a point, 7 to 6. Mark Allery taking an early exit with two quick fouls. He's been replaced by Jay Billis on the Duke front line. And now about to resume play as you take a look at what happened last year. Duke winning both times. In fact, since uh, the freshman year of this heralded group of now seniors on this Duke ball club, the Allerys, the Dawkins, the Billises, the Hendersons, etc. cetera, uh, when Virginia won two straight, the Blue Devils since then have won four in a row. Here's Henderson. He knocks it in from long range. Whether he starts or comes off the bench, Makes he's, no so difference. he's so explosive. It'll be interesting to see, too, if he'll go back to be the sixth man when Billis is in full strength. I think Mike Krzyzewski is hedging his bets with that, with that regard, Billy, now. And talking with him yesterday, Sheehy hits again for Virginia, his second field goal. He feels like, as you said at the top of the telecast, that they're a more versatile club, and he has more options with Billis coming off the bench and Henderson and Curry starting. Trying to get the ball right in the center of that zone. There it is. And uh, Mr. Henderson drawing a lot of attention. Fouled on the play, I believe, by Tom Calloway. Anytime you see a team play a 2-3 zone like that and you get people flashing in the middle as David Henderson did, you can cause a lot of problems for the zone, even though Virginia has some nice quickness in that back line. First personal foul against Callaway and the second team foul against Virginia. Quick inbounds pass, a jumper by Henderson from this side, failed to go, lead to Sheehy. He takes it inside and throws up a prayer, but he was called for step. Sometimes you have to fault the passer. In that particular case, by passing that ball ahead to Sheehy, it put Sheehy in a very difficult position to make anything other than a turnover. That's a fourth Virginia turnover already, having led to four Duke University points. And the Cavaliers now go back to defense as Amaker finds Dawkins open, and Johnny drives another one in for downtown. Three field goals for Johnny Dawkins. Amaker is so good at getting that penetration against the zone. Sims got Amaker airborne, but threw up an air ball. Henderson's underneath for Duke, and Dawkins almost lost it over the sideline. Dawkins will try from another sector and drop it in again. Amaker again with a little penetration, kind of throws the defense. Dawkins knows how to find that open area. He is four for four at the outset, and that can spell trouble for a lot of ball clubs. On the drive, the shot by Kennedy failed to go. Curry hit the deck, no whistle, or no. And Polonese hits a follow shot, and uh, Virginia right now trying to regroup. Coach K asking for a charge on that play. Curry does a good job of drawing charges. There's Henderson inside. MVP of the NIT preseason tournament. Had a career-high 30 last Sunday at Madison Square Garden to lead Duke to that big win over Kansas. 
Galloway trying to shake free of Amaker. Now gives it up to Derek Sims. The ball is rotated, Paul, and he's going to be in position. He was trying to get in position on Phyllis, but Phyllis's upper body strength is just something, and Polonese couldn't move him. And Polonese picks up his first foul. So Duke has some things going for him at the moment. And now John Johnson will check in for the first time for the University of Virginia, replacing Tom Calloway as we take a look at that foul again. You can see Phyllis just cannot be moved. You're talking about a Mack truck standing there, particularly above the waist. He's worked on those weights and is extremely powerful. Billy King also now in for the first time tonight for Duke, so both ball clubs substituted. Amaker take the jump shot. Check. Here's Dawkins. Throws two defensive men in that zone. It gives Dawkins just enough room to get off the shot. Beautiful guard play. You know, interesting about Dawkins' is to start tonight, Billy. A lot of people figure he's a better penetrating shooter, shooting on the move, and he's been a spot-up shooter so far here in the first half. Another score by Duke. Probably going to have to slow things down with Virginia. Maybe coming up with a timeout. Good hustle. Ball picked up in mid-court. Drive by Johnson. Good defense by Dawkins, who came up from behind to knock it out of bounds. Johnson can fly, and Johnny Dawkins still was able to catch it. Now Kennedy will make the inbounds pass for Virginia. Sheehy takes it against the defense of Billy King. And he's called for double dribble. Billy King will really get on somebody. He's another very good athlete. 16 to 11, Duke in front as Mark Gallery comes in, replacing Jay Billis. Got about four minutes out of Billis. Now, Allery was hot when he went out. Well, let's see if he can keep his composure a little bit, not pick up one of those cheap fouls. Well, right now, Duke's front line made up of Mark Gallery, Billy King, and David Henderson. Amaker and Dawkins continue to work in the backcourt. Virginia goes man to man. First time that has happened here in the first half. Dawkins on the drive, whistle, and he works as traveling, and they'll go the other way with him. Kennedy was happy about that because <laughs> he can't handle Dawkins one-on-one. -on -one. He got caught on the switch. We have both Kennedys in the game now. And Johnny Dawkins is going to take Mel Kennedy. That's only the third Duke turnover. Andrew Kennedy, the junior college transfer, as Billy mentioned, in the lineup for the first time for Virginia. Good pass to Johnson. He travels to the land of the Giants and hits that nice running one-hand. If Duke is going to switch that much, Mel Kennedy can find himself very easily being guarded by Amaker. If he does that, he'll be able to post up inside a little bit. 16-13, the homestanding Blue Devils out in front with 11.40 to go in the first half. Henderson, a hard bank shot, rebounds his own missed shot, and now looks for help take by Andrew Kennedy. Henderson is an excellent offensive rebounder. When he shoots the ball, you've got to stay with him. He gets open briefly on the baseline. Sign did not go, but he was fouled by Andrew Kennedy, and he didn't like the call. Andrew Kennedy has shown us in two plays. He's a pretty good athlete. He stayed right down on Henderson. I didn't see the foul either. Well, they say when Terry Holland brings Andrew Kennedy off the bench and into the game, it's more to try and settle his ball club down, provide some stability defensively, and uh, that right now is what Virginia is in bad need of. And that's kind of surprising to think of those qualities coming from a junior college player. He's an excellent student. He was actually recruited as a mistake. Looking at somebody else, I understand, but uh, has played very, very well. There's a difference in years for one David Henderson. One start last year, he has started every game now this season. And as Billy pointed out, it really makes no difference whether he comes off the bench or starts. He gets the job done. That's right. He explodes as soon as he hits that floor. Back door cut by Virginia. Nothing available. Now Kennedy looking inside, puts it on the floor. There again, it's, it's Amaker on Kennedy. And what Mel Kennedy has got to do when, they, when Duke switches like that is not try to handle the ball in the backcourt, but to slide inside, taking Amaker with him, get the ball back on the inside. That time, the quick hands of Tommy Amaker results in a personal foul, and uh, that's team foul number four against the Duke Blue Devils. Virginia will inbounds. Coach K a little hot down there saying Kennedy's pushing off. He better be careful. He's going to pick himself up a technical. He doesn't want it right now because he'd get a two-shot technical on top of a one-on-one. -on -one. Plus the ball out of bounds from Virginia. In and out. 
So Kennedy one for three from the free throw line. Virginia remains down by four. Kennedy got the roll, and immediately the horn sounds and a timeout on the floor. So 11-11 remaining. Half number one here at Duke with the Blue Devils in front of the Virginia Cavaliers, 17 to 14, and we will be back. Duke up by a trio over Virginia, 17 to 14. This reminder at the conclusion of tonight's game, join us as we'll be choosing a player from each team as a Holly Farms players of the game. It's coming up after this one is over with. Taking a look at the turnover situation, Virginia, that's a problem, uh, certainly was a big problem for the Cavaliers last year. And uh, so far tonight, they have doubled the turnovers on the Duke ball club at six to three. Duke bringing the ball up with a lead of 17 to 14. Virginia picking up a little higher right now. Duke has been hot as a proverbial firecracker. They put it up 11 times with eight hits. The pass goes over Allery, a whistle, and another foul, number two on Olden Polonese for pushing off. He knows <laughs> that ball was thrown a little high, but Allery was just frozen. He couldn't move because Polonese had his arm right in his back. So four fouls on the Cavaliers. Likewise, the same number on the... Duke Blue Devils and a substitution made before the pass is thrown in. Tom Sheehy checks in and going to the Virginia bench will be John Johnson. And that puts Kennedy in the backcourt. Wake Forest suffering a tough loss tonight to a good Boston College team as you just saw 62 to 60 the final score. Shows me a little bit. Bobby Stack has that club playing as well as they're going to play. He's a good coach, Billy. Did an excellent job at Xavier in Cincinnati before taking over as a head man at Wake Forest. Tom Sheehy hits his third field goal. He has six points. And so just like that, it's a one-point ball game as Johnny Dawkins dribbles outside for the Blue Devils. Allery 18 straight away. A little bit short. Dawkins jump hooking. Johnny Dawkins just wanted to get that back up there. And there's Billy King. Well, Duke doing an excellent job that time on the board. King takes it inside for the bank shot that's too strong, and it's knocked out of bounds. Sheehy rules the last man to touch it. And again, Billy King banging on the boards on the inside. King really doesn't look for the shot. He's not a good shooter, but he doesn't mind firing it up when he penetrates a little bit. Throws it up so hard against the glass. Danny Ferry has come back for Duke. Amaker, free throw line, knocks it in. We are experiencing network technical difficulties. Please stand by. Big score if that's the part of the game that he wanted to expose. 1916, Duke by three, under 10 minutes to go here in the first half. The first conference game in the Atlantic Coast Conference season. She stumbles, falls, gets the ball inside. Kennedy hit the turnaround and drew the foul. There's, There's the case. 21. Kennedy is set up in the backcourt now, and he went down inside instead of trying to play in the backcourt with a Dawkins or Amaker. That time he was matched up with Dawkins. We'll see it. Even though Johnny Dawkins is an excellent leaper, he won't consistently be able to stay with Kennedy on the inside. First foul on Johnny Dawkins and another substitution for Virginia. Six foot 11 inch sophomore John Dislin has come in for the first time. He replaces Olden Polonese in the middle. Kennedy shooting for the three point play and misses again from the free throw line. What Terry Holland's trying to do is just get some minutes out of Dislin so he doesn't get any more fouls on Polonese. Duke by a point. And possession. Amaker whips it inside to Allery. No go there. Back out to Amaker. Here he goes again. Rebounded inside that time by Andrew Kennedy and clears it out to Tom Calloway, who's come back. Now the foul call on Billy King. He tried to reach around and create a loose ball situation. That's his first. Virginia really doing a nice job getting that ball down into the post. Good bounce pass. Kennedy had excellent position on King. He couldn't get around. And there was the foul. Now Kennedy will make the pass for the Virginia Cavaliers, who with a basket here could go back out in front. It's Tom Calloway picked up by Johnny Dawkins. 45 second clock has not been a factor in the game at all tonight. Not the way these two clubs have been putting it up. Both teams kind of use about 15 seconds of time. Turnaround jump shot on the way. An air ball. There's Dislin getting he walked and put it in, and they didn't call it. No, he walked and got away with it. Quite a shot. 
Kind of ran out of steps and said, I better get rid of this ball. <laughs> so John Dislin makes his presence felt very, very quickly. Virginia back by one at 20 to 19. Allery shooting to put his club in front. Rebounded by Kennedy. Up the floor. She, he's stolen back by Henderson. That's the second time tonight Virginia passed, creating the turnover. That's a charm. It certainly is. Oh, oh no. Oh. <laughs> Terry Holland can't believe that one. Can you? No, I thought this one was there. Here comes Henderson. He made up his mind at 20 feet. He was going to the hoop. I mean, what more can Dislin do? He was standing there waiting on him. They call the blocking foul, and it'll put Allery on the line for a couple of shots. Maybe they're trying to tell him he was walking before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll be Henderson on the free throw line, shooting a couple of shots, a beneficiary of that blocking foul, and the game is tied at 20 apiece. You know, in the collegiate game, when you make up your mind to drive to the basket from 15 to 20 feet out, almost invariably, you're going to be in a situation where somebody's going to wait on you there for the block. So Dislin plays very briefly, but contributes with a field goal, also called for a block. And Alden Polonese is back in for Virginia. Boy, Sheehy really battles on the inside. He's not a great leaper, but he uses that body. 20-20 lockup with 8-20 remaining in the first half. Kennedy has it batted away. Picks it up in the backcourt. He moves by Henderson. Finds Callaway open. He's yet to put it up tonight. He puts this one up, and here's a foul call. And that's going to be an offensive foul against Tom Callaway. Another example. He made up his mind to penetrate from about 12 feet out. Very difficult to go the distance. Nice pass by Kennedy. Callaway makes up his mind to go the hoop. Phyllis just goes over and takes position in the lane. He's waiting now. And they will go down to the other end to shoot this one, that being the 17 foul against Virginia. There's a play, Marty, that I, I talked to the official before the game about tonight that's not really consistent in the rules, and that is if a man's fouled in the act of shooting. Even though he hasn't released the ball, if the foul's on the defense, the shot counts. But if he's if he commits the foul as an offensive player while he's in the act of shooting, they don't wait to see if the ball goes in. It does not count. I, I think they're uh, I'll have to look into that a little bit. Maybe be consistent in both ways. We had a fairly spirited conversation with John with uh, Lenny Works in their dressing room before the game about that. Dave Billis one for two from the free throw line, 21-20. That's the margin of difference with Duke in front. Eight minutes on the clock, first down. Sheehy, contact Beautiful with pass. great pass inside. Polonies could not get it to go down, but he was fouled. And I believe if we see that play over again, Olden Polonies got some steps in before he got it off, but the foul was called. Good pass by Sheehy on the baseline. Here comes Sheehy. Excellent drop, good jump step. Now there's Polonies. Now watch him step again. Might have kept that foot in there. I think I, might have, I was wrong on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Referee's on top of the game. I thought he shuffled the feet, but he held his, his uh, right foot right on that floor. Billy King back to the Duke bench. He's been replaced by Tommy Amaker. And his Polonies on the free throw line. He has had a couple of field goals so far in his first trip to the line. Holden has a very unusual style of getting himself prepared to shoot. He is consistent with it. Now neither team shooting well from the free throw line. Virginia three out of six, and Duke is but three of eight. It's like he's talking to that ball. One for two. Virginia, however, keeps it. Big rebound in traffic by Andrew Kennedy. Tie game 21. Running one-hander. Kennedy has it rolled off. Picked off by David Henderson. Henderson gets a defensive rebound. He really explodes out of there and almost sets up a fast break opportunity by himself. Dawkins making his move. He double clutches it up, had it rejected inside by Tom Sheehy and gets it right back to Andy Perry. Short. Perry really wasn't squared around to take that jump shot. Another rebound by Andrew Kennedy, who has certainly contributed off the bench with his fourth tonight for Virginia in the first half. But Virginia turns it right back over to Duke. To the breaking, Tommy Amaker for David Henderson. Although that wasn't a rebound, it was just like a rebound and a steal for Henderson. He knows how he can just take the ball on the break by himself. 23-21, Duke back out in front. It has been very, very close this entire first almost 14 minutes of the half. Good overplay by Johnny Dawkins. Callaway 
finally gets a pass off to Mel Kennedy. She he left open from the right pocket. Here's Tommy Amaker, and here comes Duke again. She he looks like he's getting a little tired. Stops and fires. Rebounded by Ferry, and he was fouled. Fouled by Sheehy, and when you get a little tired, you have a tendency to start reaching a little bit. Bill, you mentioned the 45-second clock. Of course, it goes the entire time this season as we look at that play again. You notice Sheehy out of position. Very seldom does he find himself that way, and he just reached in on Ferry. Another rules change has to do with the intentional foul, which you'll be discussing with the ACC supervisor of officials, Fred Barakat, at halftime. We will be doing that, and any of the people that saw the NC State game today will probably talk to Fred about airplane arrangements. <laughs> Make sure that all his officials get there the day before the game. And I may point out, uh, those were not ACC officials today. They were from the Big Eight. ACC officials would have to have been in that particular situation at that game site the night before. Well, they sure showed up in Bloomington, Indiana earlier this week to referee that Notre Dame-Indiana game. The only problem was the crew from the Missouri Valley had shown up also. <laughs> Six is about too many. Uh, that's it? right. A little bit too many. Timeout call, 6.20 remaining. Duke in front by a couple at 23-21. to 21. We'll continue play from Durham right after this. There's your score, 23 Duke, 21, the University of Virginia, and a close one here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Be sure to stay with us at halftime. We've got a lot cooking for you. We'll take a look at Mazda's ACC game plan again, Black & Decker's ACC flashback. Plus, as we mentioned, uh, we'll be chatting, Billy Will, with ACC supervisor of officials Fred Barakat about the intentional foul. So by all means, stay with us at the break. There are the nine Virginia turnovers leading to 12 Duke points, and that has been a very big factor in the first half. Compare that with three Duke turnovers that have materialized into five points for the University of Virginia. Lance Banks into the ball game now for the first time. Freshman out of the state of Texas, he was voted Mr. Basketball in that state last year over the Moore Herald and Tito Horford. John Johnson also back in. Puts up the jump shot against double-team defense and got it to go. Nice shot. He had 19 big ones in Virginia's last game that went over BMI, and he's come off the bench in this game to throw in two field goals. New York City prospect would like to get back into action, get some more playing time. He came into uh, Virginia very much heralded. Looked like he'd have an opportunity to be a full-time starter, but it hasn't worked out. Maybe he's ready to make his move. The announcers for this game were approved and selected by Raycom Sports, Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, duplication, or reception of this telecast without the express written permission of Raycom Sports, Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions is prohibited. Whistle, foul call, Dave Henderson, the perpetrator, and uh, Virginia will go to the free throw line. Virginia works that play very well. That time, uh, Johnson was able to fire the ball back across court. Kennedy had his man pinned beautifully for the Sheehy pass. Well, Billy King back off the bench for the Duke Blue Devils as both coaches have been substituting fairly freely here in the first half. Andrew Kennedy on the free throw line. And he's going to come in there very well. He's averaging almost 79% uh, percent from the free throw line. Third-team junior college All-American last year at Amarillo Junior College, where he averaged over 21 points a game and eight rebounds. Neither club continuing to shoot anything to write home about from that free throw line, but the one hit by Kennedy gives Virginia the one-point lead. There's the 1-3-1 one, one half-court trap by Virginia. They find the seam in the defense, and Henderson hits that high-percentage jump shot. That's the difference between an experienced club and one inexperienced. They saw a new type of defense, knew exactly how to attack. Good back up by a point. Under five minutes to go in the first half. That blanks the freshman. Andrew Kennedy again getting good position on the inside. There's a steal by Allery. He just stuck his hand in front of the expected Tom Sheehy to come up with a ball for Duke. Virginia really out of play right now. They're not sure what defense they're in. Allery couldn't take advantage of it. Duke will keep it, however. Blue Devils had David Henderson, Tommy Amaker, Jay Billis, Billy King, and Mark Allery in their lineup at the moment. Olin Polonese, Tom Sheehy, Andrew Kennedy. The freshman Lance Blanks and Johnny Johnson going for the Virginia Cavaliers. Amaker, Allery, 
Long rebound controlled by Virginia. Good block out by Sheehy. Johnson went as far as he could go. Now gets it back from Plank. Drive. Double plugs it up. No good. Ball Ooh, good up. Nail to go. It bangs around again. Out of bounds. Nope. Yes, it is. Out of bounds to Duke. Well, Henderson tried to get his hands on the ball, and Johnson said, wait a second, he can't be out of bounds that way. See the play? Definitely went out by the Duke players. It ended up being Duke's ball. Johnny Dawkins has come back for the Duke Blue Devils. Virginia really getting on the boards with this Duke ball club. Duke going to a double low post. Stack offense there. Hawkins plays it off to Tom Sheehy. Now Johnson trying to spin away from Ferry. Has it tipped away. And Danny oh. Ferry, and a very, very unpopular decision, is going to be called for the personal foul. And it really looked like all he got was ball. Ferry reaching in, of course, has a lot of size. Johnson trying to handle that ball, putting it on the floor an awful lot. Ferry picks up a cheap one. See the play right here. Danny Ferry. Reaches in, gets the ball, a little touch ball on the hand, but really had more ball. So it'll put Virginia back on the free throw line as Tom Callaway comes back in for the Virginia Cavaliers. The third-ranked Duke Blue Devils. You find them ranked number three in the nation in almost every poll. Virginia unranked, but you can pretty much write it down. They come in here and pull off an upset tonight. You'll find them in the top 20 come next week. Marty, we talked about them being an underrated club. One of the things that uh, fans should look out for is the way a coach talks, particularly a coach that's been around for a while. Terry Holland liked this ball club. He liked the way the team was coming together at the end of last year. When a coach makes those kind of statements, you know he really thinks that they can do something. John Johnson hit two free throws. Virginia has regained the lead with just under four minutes remaining, 26-25. We'll be back right after this. Stated by Johnny Dawkins, but Virginia does have uh, some very experienced players out there, although they don't have the senior class. Dawkins with his sixth long-range field goal as he set up behind the screen set by Danny Ferry and took care of the rest. Cavaliers now trail 27-26. John Johnson trying to answer at the other end. Billy King clears for the Blue Devils, and here comes Tommy Amaker. Looks like Johnson's trying to do too much too quickly. Great man-to-man -man now by Virginia. Dawkins head fakes a couple of times. Amaker fakes his man out, puts it up, and rolls off. The tip fails to go. Somebody grabbed the rim, no whistle, and it's out of bounds to Virginia. So let's see if Johnson can get the team in the offense as opposed to trying to do too much one-on-one -on -one himself. Three minutes to go. First half action from Cameron Indoor Stadium at Duke University. And the Cavaliers trail the Duke Blue Devils by a point, but Virginia has the ball. It's knocked out of bounds, and Andrew Kennedy will inbound for the Cavaliers. Nice piece of officiating inside, telling Polonese and Billis just to take it easy. Billis leaning on Polonese very well, cross-court pass. Working, turning, shooting as Mel Kennedy, trying to get his own missed shot, did, and was fouled from behind. I think Danny Ferry got him. And if Ferry commits a foul, it's going to be his third personal. See, Kennedy again, nobody blocking him out. Phyllis put a body on Polonese, but nobody got to Kennedy, and, and he really crashes the boards very well. They call the foul on Jay Phyllis, and that's his second personal foul. Foul shooting not very good by either club. Virginia 6 for 11, Duke 3 for 9. Saw today in the Kansas NC State game, Kansas shot very poorly from the foul line in the first half, particularly it means an awful lot to play a ball game like this if you don't start making those free throws. Now Kennedy puts it up and in. He's had somewhat of a rough time of it from the free throw line, but that one goes, and again, we are tied up this time at 27. 75% free throws. You're only been to the line eight times prior to going into tonight's game, which is surprisingly low for a fellow that battles that, that hard off the offensive boards. Virginia by one, 28 to 27. Tommy Amaker calls a play out as he comes over the midcourt line. Allery comes out to get the ball, looks low to Billy King, and now he spins to the wing to get it. Andrew Kennedy doing a good job on Henderson inside. Fundamentally very sound. And a foul called off the ball, and that's, well, it looks like Olin Polonies. He threw his hands up as if to say, I didn't commit the foul, and if he did, that's his third. And that's a tough break for Terry Hall. He's got two minutes and 30 seconds to go. He'll have to get him out of there. And he's getting him out right now as Tom Sheehy comes in to replace him. 
good overplay defense by Virginia. You know, they started out in the zone, but now they're man to man, and they look like they can handle a man to man defense. Overplay the ball. Terry Holland trying to get those officials to give him a little attention right now. Both coaches working the refs. Let's check Billy King's free throw for him out. He had a horrendous time of it last year and threw one up long that time. Well, Billy almost could get to the position to start trying something underhanded. I mean, he's got to do something to change that around. He just has no confidence on that line. 28-27, Virginia shooting for the three-point lead, and they get it as Kennedy hits a nice running one-handed. You notice, Marty, how Virginia has taken the Duke student body out of this game. Normally a very loud crowd, but the way Virginia's playing, they just have them sitting on the seats. Or Dawkins, who took charge early, gives the ball up. It's Amaker having it knocked away from him by Andrew Kennedy. Boy, he has really contributed here in the first half, and now it's out of bounds as King knocks the ball away from Tom Calloway. I'm very impressed with Andrew Kennedy. Fundamentally, he's sound. He doesn't try to do too much with the ball. He gets good position. He has been well coached by somebody prior to getting to Virginia because you can't turn a man around that quickly. Phyllis is back on the Duke front line. Mark Gallery goes back to the bench. Ball tipped away and a holding foul called against Johnny Dawkins. Now you see Coach K off the bench. Both coaches are really starting to get on these officials. When you have this much quickness, particularly in the backcourt, you're going to get some of those reaching calls. So Virginia goes back to the free throw line with under two minutes remaining in the half. And, uh, well, they've come into a very, very difficult place to attempt to win in. And right now they have a three-point lead with a chance to increase it. One and one coming up for Tom Calloway. Calloway, of course, a transfer student from Old Dominion, right from Charlottesville. It's an unusual situation to be from the town and go away and then come back. He and have more success at the school you came back That's to. That's right. He hit both free throws, and Virginia now by five at 32 to 27. Minute 38, 37, 36 to go, half number one. And Phyllis screened Andrew Kennedy that time, and Kennedy still got position. And they're going to get a foul call here against Virginia as they tried. Amaker tried to get the pass inside. Henderson went down, and somebody knocked him down. It was Andrew Kennedy because he was battling to get back in some kind of decent position. Another highly touted freshman comes in now for the Duke Blue Devils. First appearance tonight for the young man from Mercer Island, Washington. You're looking at him, Quinn Snyder. It was interesting when he was being recruited by Duke and I had an opportunity to do some games out on the West Coast. They felt that Snyder was one of the most fundamentally sound backcourt players on the West Coast and, and that had been there for quite some time. Well, Mike Krzyzewski continues to recruit the country. He has players now from eight different states plus the District of Columbia on this basketball team with uh, Snyder matriculating from the state of Washington. Now, Dislin in the ball game again. Let's see if Virginia tries to use a little bit of the clock. Again, we know the 45-second clock works the entire ball game and any overtimes, but there is an opportunity here with 1.31 to go to try to milk a little bit of this 45 seconds. Derek Sims has come back for Virginia, 32 to 29. Virginia in front. John Johnson bringing it up against Tommy Amaker. Looking to find somebody open, he finds Sheehy and gets it right back. Duke overplays every pass. And they throw it away. And there's a case. They used about 25 seconds on the clock. Did not get a shot. That really hurts you. Gives Duke a chance to close to within one with just over a minute to go in the half. Henderson spins out of the baseline to get it. Kennedy has him. There's some solid screens being thrown down inside. Snyder handles for the first time. Tom Amaker tried to go back door. Nothing there. And now they bring it out to Henderson again. 17 seconds on the shot clock as Henderson puts it up. He gets the ball right back as it went off the hands of Sheehy, and he drew the personal foul. David Henderson is so good when he goes on that baseline because he can make up a play as he goes. Nobody blocking out the shooter. Always gets you in trouble. Henderson comes in there. Dislin has his hands in perfect position for the block, but Henderson just creates a shot and draws the foul. And Dislin fouled him, so Henderson back to the free throw line where he has already ventured six times in the game. Regardless of what happens here, I think Virginia would be smart to go for the last shot. But the clock is off because we're under 45 seconds. So they can hold it right to the end. You'd like to go in with a lead. 
on the other fellow's home court. So Henderson has now hit three in a row from the free throw line and trying to cut the Virginia lead to one point. And did not get the roll that time. The tip in failed, and a foul is called against Duke's Billy King. Yep. Billy King pushed off. Duke's going to walk to the other end. Duke will have an opportunity to get that ball back. A lot of fouls here in the first half. Danny Ferry has been charged with two. Mark uh, Allery with a couple of fouls. Johnny Dawkins, two fouls. King now with two. Billis has two. Gisela not sure who's going to the foul line. Sheehy walks right up there and says it'll be mine. Sheehy, a better foul shooter, shooting almost 88%. And another freshman coming in for the University of Virginia, 6'9", out of Indianapolis, Jeff Daniel. So it's not a bad trade-off. This one is 0 for 2. Sheehy shooting close to 90. <laughs> so Sheehy knew who was supposed to be on that line. He was voted the most improved player on this entire Virginia team as a result of his sophomore season. He came in from Rochester, New York, pretty much as a finesse player and has turned into a real banger. This one kept that ball alive. Henderson makes his move to get by John Johnson, runs into traffic. Billy King is fouled as he put it up. Either Dislin or Mel Kennedy got it. I believe Kennedy got more of it than Dislin did, but he's got to be careful. You sure don't want a technical foul in this situation. Terry uh, Holland appealing to official Bobby Taylor on the call. I think uh, Marty Terry was talking about the play of Henderson right before the pass, where he thought he made a shuffle his feet a little bit inside. Well, Billy King shooting two shots. He's 0 for 1. He's and 0 for his career almost. I mean, you really feel sorry for somebody that had so much trouble on the foul line. Well, they say he worked an awful lot this past summer in trying to improve his shooting, and he's hitless tonight in three attempts. Henderson got the rebound back. His shot was blocked, the jump ball, and Duke will keep it. Arrow pointing, of course, to Duke. Good job by the Virginia players just keeping their hands up. Not coming down with that chopping motion, which always causes the foul. So Duke getting ample opportunity here, and they've not been able to really take advantage of it. As King misses two free throws in a row, they get the ball right back with 24 seconds to go, and down by three. You take a look at what we were mentioning earlier, the high ranking by the Duke Blue Devils, one of three ACC clubs in the top five in the nation in every bowl. Henderson from outside. Well, let's see if Virginia holds it for one. 33-32. 14 seconds on the clock. John Johnson making his move, kicks it back outside. The jumper by Kennedy. The rebound by King. One second to go. The long shot by Abaker. Tommy hey! yeah. Abaker fires one up from the other side of the midcourt line. And a Hail Mary has set the Duke Blue Devils in front by one here at the break. What a wrap up. Marty, that's why you want to hold it for that last shot. Do not get a chance to turn these fans on. He's probably saying, Billy, I had it all the way. Oh, yeah. Well, quite an exciting climax to an exciting first half, and you see what's coming up here at halftime. Our Black and Decker ACC flashback, Budweiser scoreboard, and supervisor of officials, Fred Barakat. 34-33 Duke in the break. Back after this from Budweiser. Back is brought to you by Black & Decker M47 Series Power Tools. Duke's Cameron Indoor Stadium was the scene for the first meeting between Mike Jeminski, the returning ACC Player of the Year, and 7'4 freshman Ralph Sampson. Jeminski was a three-time All-American, and one of the main reasons was the way he controlled the middle. And although Ralph was just a freshman, he showed Duke that that was already one of his strong suits, too. Another asset Samson had from the very beginning was his soft jumper. And in this game, it helped keep the Cavaliers close in the first half. But Jeminski and the Blue Devils led the entire first half. And with this shot, the 6'11 senior passed the 2,000-point plateau and powered Duke to a four-point halftime lead. Virginia came out with a big run after intermission, led by Jeff Lamp, who had 17 of his 27 in the second half. This jumper ties it at 48. And then Sampson takes over. The rookie from Harrisonburg, Virginia, who would become a three-time National Player of the Year, hit six of seven in the second half. 
and held Jaminski to just one basket over the last 10 minutes. Jaminski had 20 points and 10 rebounds, but Ralph scored 23 points and snared 13 rebounds and won round one between these two great ACC centers. Tonight's ACC flashback has been brought to you by Black & Decker M47 Series Power Tools. Halftime score, Duke by one over Virginia, 34 to 33 here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Now it's time for our halftime scoreboard brought to you tonight by Budweiser. Here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Now it's time for our halftime scoreboard brought to you tonight by Budweiser. Game almost from the outset with Duke right now holding a one point lead, 34 to 33. Mel Kennedy's done an outstanding job, as has Dave Henderson for the Duke Blue Devils. Kennedy and Henderson, the top scorers for their respective ball clubs with 10 and 13 points apiece. Tom Sheehy with seven. Johnny Dawkins, hot early, has hit six long-range field goals. The second Duke performer in double figures with 12. And, uh, well, we're underway here in the second half. Virginia with the ball, down by a point. Tom Calloway starting in the backcourt along with Derek Sims. Ball knocked away by Mark Allery and could not keep it inbounds. Virginia will maintain possession. Up front for the Cavaliers, Olden Polonies, Tom Sheehy, and Mel Kennedy. And it'll be inbounded to Kennedy. He puts it up and in. And just like that, Virginia regains the lead at 35 to 34. Kennedy now with 12 points. It took a miracle shot from the other side of the midcourt line in the final seconds of the first half by that man, Tommy Amaker, to send Duke to the dressing room up by one. And Allery gets the lead right back to the Duke Blue Devils with only a second field goal. Allery with four points, and it's Duke by one at 36 to 35. Galloway wants to go to the hole. Turns, puts up the turnaround. No good. Rebounded by David Henderson inside. So Duke looking for a little bit of breathing room right now. Henderson and Dawkins between them with 25 of Duke's first half points. Henderson with quite a bank shot. And contact made the foul called against Mel Kennedy. That's quite a move by Henderson. He had a man up in the air and then kept his body. You'll see Henderson. Watch him push his body back into the defender and then still be strong enough to get that shot off. Billy, you discussed the rule with Fred Barrett. How do you feel about it? Well, I thought that that play, I'll be honest with you, when I was watching that game at home, I thought that that was kind of a touch foul. Now, they say he hit him in the, uh, premeditatedly hit him in the uh, chest with his elbow, and maybe you could say that, but I, I thought that it was kind of a touch foul on a three-on-one break, and I look for that intentional foul to be more like grabbing a man or pushing a man. If you're going to say he actually punched Doherty on the play, I thought it should have been flagrant. Here's Polonese inside. He did not get the roll. The tip failed to go. Inside. Good Andy rebound. With a rebound. Here come the Blue Devils. Tommy Abbott oh, weaving yes. his magic missile layup. Still loose inside. Picked off by Derek Sims of Virginia. Good quickness out there on the part of both clubs. Tom Calloway. Sheehy inside Polonese. He was fouled before he went to the act of shooting by Mark Allery. And that's his third. Marty, we talked that one of our tips in this ball game is for Virginia to get that ball inside the Polonese. It creates so many problems, and one of the big problems it causes for Duke is to keep Allery in foul trouble. Polonese not heard from to any great extent in the first half with only five points. That time there it is again. Foul. He gets it inside. That time could maintain possession, but got it back, and will bring it outside to Kennedy. Callaway sets it up. Now Ferry's over on Polonese now, with Allery having his third foul. A factor that could very easily come into play here in the second half. Look at the way these two ball clubs have been going against each other, and there's Mr. Kennedy again. Kennedy with 14, make it 14 points, two quick field goals here in the second half. 39 37, Duke lead to two. Tommy Amaker, Johnny Dawkins, left hands it up, no good. Tipped down oh, nice. by Mark Allery. Left hand. Allery's one of those fellows that seems to explode with his points. Quiet for the first half. Coming back here in the second, picking up two quick field goals. Traveling violation, or do they call it a foul? They'll call it a foul against Duke as uh, Derek Sims went down on the dribble. And now Mike Krzyzewski starting to really work on Lenny Wirtz. 
Well, it was not an intentional trip, obviously. It was a matter of did Sims trip over Henderson's foot? Duke fans letting everybody know what they think of the call. That becomes a second foul against David Henderson, and now Lenny Wirtz having something to say to Derek Sims. They get it straightened out, and Sims will make the pass inbounds for Virginia. Kennedy whips it out to Callaway. Virginia trails by four. 17 plus to go in the game. Virginia ought to go back into Polonese. There see he with a hook. You've got Allery on him with three fouls. You want to get Allery sitting on that bench here early in the second half. Virginia ought to be really trying to recognize Polonese inside. Tom Sheehy with a jump hook has 9, 41, 39. The Duke Blue Devils pulling the trigger is Henderson. Good form, didn't go. Rebounded inside by Kennedy, kicks it out to Callaway. Had Sheehy open up the floor, didn't see. He finds Kennedy, drove around Allery, and Mark got a hand on the ball. It's picked up by Sims. Good defense by Mark Allery. Oh, it's great double one team. On one. And now it's double team. It's Amaker. It's Amaker laying it in. Now that was just the fact that Amaker and Dawkins have played with each other for so long. They recognized the double team opportunity, and the ball was gone. 43 to 39. Duke back up by four. Now Kennedy turns right on Henderson. Down speeds to Derek Sims. He puts up the jumper short. Sheehy battling Allery. Allery saves it at the baseline to Tommy Amaker. Terry left open. That's Barry's shot. He likes that jumper. Oh, that's a charge. Offensive foul, I should say it was. Derek Sims dropping Amaker in open field, and Duke gets it right back on the charge called against Sims. Now, you see the play here. Sims dribbling much too much. He had Polonese wide open underneath the basket. All he had to do is to stay under control, lay that ball off to Polonese for an easy one, and instead of getting two, it's going to be Duke coming the other way. And things not going well at the moment for Virginia. Their 13th turnover for the Cavaliers. Paved the way for 14 Duke points, and the Cavaliers, or Duke rather, trying to convert again to go up by six. Andrew Kennedy back in the ball game now. Sims sits down. 2-3 zone. Gallery checked by Andrew Kennedy. Now Dawkins. Henderson. Dawkins gets it right back. Kicks it off to Amaker. Good pump fake. Amaker had a motion. Now decides to put it up. He throws up what was just about an air ball and lost out of bounds by David Henderson. For young players to watch Amaker and Dawkins with that pump fake before they put the ball on the floor, it's a great technique. We've got a timeout on the floor. Duke in front by four, 43 to 39 with a timeout. And we'll be back with more ACC action right after this. Our lead over Virginia, 43 to 39. And elsewhere, involving ACC teams, uh, Billy Jerry Tarkanian's club gained some small measure of revenge against the Atlantic Coast Conference. A one-point overtime win over Maryland. Very tough team for Maryland to play. Uh, you've got a lot of power up front by UNLV. They're quick. Maryland's going to have a problem this year trying to figure out how to stop people in the middle. Double team by Duke. Andrew Kennedy finds Tom Sheehy shooting over Billy King. Virginia push off. Hadley needs a basket. Here's Polonese, and he responds. Polonese got away with a push off that time on Allery, but Allery's in a tough position with three fouls on him. Yeah, I think it's really uh, important for Virginia to go inside to Polonese. Try to get Allery out of there. Seven-point game for the big guy in the middle for Virginia. And the Cavaliers trail by two, 43-41. This is the case with Billy King in a game where Virginia can let go that side of the zone. It's a little bit more pressure out front on Henderson, Amaker, and Dawkins. Henderson got the rebound on Dawkins' missed shot. He controls the basketball for Duke. Now it's Dawkins from the right corner. And this one gets nothing but net. 14 points for Johnny Dawkins. A man who will probably become, when this season is over, is the all-time leading scorer in Duke University history. And that no small feat. The jumper by Kennedy. In and out, no good. Gallery in traffic with a rebound. That's good position by Mark Gallery. Two by four, 45-41. It's interesting that Duke would go to King this early in the uh, second half instead of Billy. Henderson puts it up. Ball is slapped to the end line, saved by Callaway. Good play to Polonese. He gets it back. And explodes up. And a nice play by Tommy Amaker. 
Amaker as he stripped him of the ball, and here comes Duke back. Henderson puts it up to Amaker. Dawkins with a running one-hander. Now, there's a case, Marty, where one backcourt was impatient on the fast break, that being Virginia. The other backcourt handled the backcourt a play beautifully on the fast break and was able to capitalize. Well, you'd call this a very wise timeout by Terry Holland. Virginia now trailing by 6, 47 to 41. will return after this from Bud. Going at the moment with a six-point lead over the Virginia Cavaliers, 47 to 41. Be sure and join us on January 4th at 1 o'clock for the ACC Sports Center show with host Paul Cameron. And tune in to your local ACC station on January the 4th when Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions will present an ACC triple header. At 1.30, NC State will take on the Tar Heels of North Carolina and Carmichael Auditorium. At 4 o'clock, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets will meet the Virginia Cavaliers in University Hall, Charlottesville. And in our final matchup of the day, we'll bring you the Duke Blue Devils at the University of Maryland. A full day of basketball, Atlantic Coast Conference style, don't miss it. 14 to 6. A big, big statistic in this game. The Cavaliers with eight more turnovers. And a number of those turnovers have been made when they had scoring opportunities on the break. And that'll really haunt you. Absolutely. And Callaway lost control of the dribble as he started toward the baseline, but he was fouled by Billy King. I think they're going to call that, Marty, on Billy King away from the ball on the screen play right there. King preventing Kennedy from moving on through. So away from the ball is the foul. And that's a third foul on King. So he joins Mark Allery in that department. Allery has now picked up Tom Sheehy, who takes the inbounds pass, and he kicks it outside to Tom Callaway. And it's Billis on Colonies. So Duke was able to go ahead and spare some minutes there before Colonies could get active again. He missed a turnaround jump shot, but there's Andrew Kennedy inside. Boy, he's been all over the place tonight and drew the foul. There's Polonis going up on Billis. Billis chesting him pretty well there. There's Kennedy, as you pointed out, Marty. He's everywhere. It's going to be very valuable to this Virginia club. Billy King charged with foul number four. And four quick team fouls on Duke here in the second half. On the line will be Kennedy. We took a look back in the old uh, scorebooks, and it looks like Virginia probably has only had two junior college players, Lamont Carr and Lewis Lattimore. Neither one, of course, had great careers. Uh, so I think Kennedy right now, we can say, is going to be the best junior college player Virginia's ever recruited in basketball. Without fear of argument. He's had eight rebounds in the ball game. He just picked up his second point, and it gets Virginia to within five at 47-42. matter of fact, his stats tonight may overshadow the career stats of the two previous J.C. Very good point. <laughs> Virginia trails by four as Johnny Dawkins takes a look at the clock overhead as he comes front court. I want to point out to the fans that may say, well, hey, Rick Carlisle was a transfer, but not from junior college. No. Allery backing off as David Henderson is. He's out there. We've got King, Dawkins, and Amaker, Allery, and Phyllis. So shot misses and a foul inside. Who's that going to be against? Good be by number 12. He to the lineup. So it'll be Virginia ball as Henderson comes in during the break of the action and King leads. There's Pollen. He's going in good, strong rebound. Had his body in good position. Went up strong. We heard that his knees are giving him a lot of problems, but he hasn't shown it at all tonight. That foul, in case you're interested, the third of the game called against Jay Phyllis. But Duke giving Virginia a chance to, to get back close again after they trail by as many as six points. Good steal on the inside. Great steal by Henderson. And Henderson comes out of the pack with the ball. But Colony had excellent position that time. Very prudently, David Henderson backed off with the dribble and now plays it off to Tommy, to Tommy Amaker. Twelve and a half minutes remaining in the game. There's a bad pass, and here's a play by John Johnson. He's fouled an open field by Amaker. Amaker showed some quickness because Johnson had a running start on him, and Amaker still was able to stay up with him somewhat. Here's the good steal, though. Johnson showing good quickness on his own. Nice crossover dribble here, but look at Amaker's footwork. Just hitting with the chest, but he is quick. Second foul, and Tommy Amaker will leave. He'll be replaced by freshman Quinn Snyder. Saw a limited playing time in the first half as you take a look at Amaker going to the Duke bench. And Snyder has checked back in. Second personal foul on Tommy Amaker. Head faking as Andrew Kennedy brings it outside. 
47 Duke, 43 Virginia. A boatload of time remaining, 12 minutes, 20 seconds on the clock. We're in the second half. Stop and go dribble by Kennedy, and a good shot off the baseline. Tom, Tommy Amaker and Dawkins, when Kennedy moves to that back court, have had a hard time handling it because he's been able to beat him on that baseline and goes up strong. He has 16 points, three field goals here in the second half. Virginia has gained some measure of momentum now as they cut it to two, and the ball is thrown out of bounds. Virginia with a chance to tie. Coach K saying it went off in Virginia's hand. He's just trying to work the official a little bit. I think both of these coaches sense this game's going to go to the wire. You just you kind of get that feeling. Well, if it does, Virginia in much better shape in terms of personal fouls, although Olden Polonese is playing with a total of three. He picked them up in the first half. Duke goes into his zone, 2-1-2. Two, two. They did a good job in the zone against Kansas in the NIT. Got in a little foul trouble, got a little tired. Kansas had that size factor on him. Mike Krzyzewski was talking about his club playing a zone defense uh, and how his mentor, Bob Knight, gives him a hard time about it, but he said the zone has been good to us. Some clubs simply cannot play against the zone. Sheehy on a push-off. Tough call against Virginia. They got the ball inside to Sheehy, but pushing off as he tried to take it to the basket, and Duke will now try to stretch the lead to four. Well, Sheehy thought he'd make that first one. That's his shot. There was a little push-off on Billis just to get position for that second rebound. Three team fouls against Virginia in the second half. Second personal foul against Tom Sheehy. Quinn Snyder handles from freshman to freshman. Curry. Back to Snyder. Well, I like the look of that shot. Snyder realized that Virginia was going to let him put it up. 49-45, a big deuce from outside by freshman Quinn Snyder. Now Virginia's turn as they try to go up top to Olden Colonies and a very poor pass thrown by John Johnson. In more ways than one. The thought process was probably as poor as the execution of the pass. You have no need to get it in there that way. They work it inside the Billis. Jump hooking air ball from in close. Rebounded by Andrew Kennedy. His ninth rebound. Off it goes to Johnson. And what kind of move was that? The tip in goes by Polonese, and Virginia can count itself as very, very fortunate. Johnson was lucky again. That wasn't a good execution of the fast break. In fact, I bet you if that ball had not been put back in there, Johnson would have been sitting over next to Terry Holland. Thank you very much. <laughs> Scotty Dawkins into Ferry. Has it knocked away, and that's another foul against Tom Sheehy. Sheehy getting a little tired now. He expended a lot of energy in that first half. Watch how he comes down and Hacks coming down over the top. You see it time and time again. If a player goes for that steal, he ought to come underneath the ball, not over the top. Duke clinging to that two-point lead. Henderson makes his move on the end line. Hemmed in there. Plays to Snyder. Good pass inside Billis. Couldn't get it to go. Ball slapped outside. Henderson runs it down. That was the best thing Polonese could do, just get the ball back out of the way from the basket. Henderson left open. Snyder found it. And David Henderson took care of the rest. By two good plays by Snyder. He hits the jumper and finds the open man on the pass. 18 points for David Henderson, the senior out of Drury, North Carolina. Four-point lead for the Duke Blue Devils. 51-47 jumper off the baseline by, you guessed it, Mel Kennedy. Got that quick first step, Marty. Now a whistle stops play. John Moreau was a man tooting it. Mark Allery standing at the scorer's table, uh, looking like he wants to come in, while Terry Holland conferring with Jim Laranega and Dave Odom, they're going to make a substitution. I think what we might have had there is a, a problem with the 45-second clock. And what happens, that 45-second clock does not start until a team gains possession of the ball. So it, it, let's suppose Duke makes the basket. Right. The 45-second clock does not automatically then start for Virginia. You have to wait till the ball gets inbounds and is in possession. So you'd have the game clock actually continuing to run, but the, the shot clock is not running. Well, now they inbounds the ball as Duke will attack from the outside with Quinn Snyder. He threw up a brick that time. Kennedy. And Kennedy right there in the middle of everything, and he was fouled by either Allery or Snyder, and Mike Krzyzewski's hoping it's against Quinn Snyder. I think it's going to be Allery. And that's number four on Allery, so he's going to have to sit down as very quickly Tommy Amaker comes off the bench to replace him. Well, look at that, Kennedy, quick off his speed got his hands on the ball twice. Mark Gallery does not want to go out. 
And he's not going he's not out. Going out. <laughs> Quinn Snyder leaves. Now what I would imagine is that Coach K is going to say, look, I've got 9.22 to go. I'll let an hour go as long as he can. I now have Phyllis. So I can go ahead and take the chance to come back with Phyllis. Now Kennedy toes a free line with a opportunity to even things up for his ball club but could not hit the front end and rebounded by Danny Perry. Virginia in that 1-2-2 two, two zone. Nine minutes, ten seconds to go in this ball game with Duke in front, 51 to 49. Allery, they leave him open, and the jump shot is long. Inside, the rebound controlled by Polonese, and a foul against Dave Henderson will be his third. Duke really piling up the uh, foul problems. Those nine minutes, a lot of time in this ball game. You have to keep fellas like Henderson and Allery in the game. Another good rebound by Polonese inside. Excellent position. I'll tell you, Virginia has been very, very impressive on the boards in this ball game. They were out rebounded by only one at halftime, and they have just simply picked up where they left off here in the second half. Free throws have been another story. In fact, not for just one club, but for both of these teams tonight. Polonese, uh, not a good free throw shooter, shooting under 60% from the free throw line. Actually, for the career, he's averaging 59.4%. And going into the after the first four games of this year, just for this year, he's 59 points. Shooting for his 11th point. Barry controls for the Blue Devils and puts it into the sure hands of Johnny Dawkins. 51-50 Duke. Zone backing up a little bit. There ought to be a jump shot opportunity. Johnny Dawkins can feel it. Dawkins makes his move, finds the open man, Abaker. He lets it fly. In and out. Rebound and control by Kennedy. Up the floor it goes, and Virginia on the move. They've taken the lead. The Cavaliers lead by a point on the drive by John Johnson. And he make it exciting on the break. <laughs> <laughs> 52 to 51, Virginia. Ball tipped out of bounds by Johnson. It'll be Duke Ball on the end line. Here comes Tom Sheehy back. He'll replace Olin Polity. So while Terry, or rather Mike Krzyzewski, playing a calculated risk in leaving Mark Allery in the lineup at the other end, Terry Holland taking Polonese out with his club up by one, and he goes to the bench with three fouls. I think he wants him to be fresh for that last five, six minutes of this ballgame. Allery and Curry playing catch now. Just like to hope that his team can stay close. Oh, good oh, the away, Andrew Kennedy. Kennedy may be the MVP of this game in Virginia. I mean, he is doing a great job out there. Got a real good chance. He strips the man inside, and Virginia with a point lead and the ball with just under eight minutes remaining. Mel Kennedy backing in, fell down. Danny Perry picks it up. Good ball handler. Amaker back to the cutting third. Now that's why Danny Perry is, is so heavily recruited. He's an excellent ball handler for a man his size. And again, uh, we said at the top of the show, he's at the right place at the right time. Being able to be brought along slowly, so there that he can really handle it. And that was a huge Virginia turnover that resulted in a Duke basket and the lead. Sheehy tries to get it back. Nice penetration by Johnson. 11 points for Tom Sheehy. 54-53 Virginia. And Polonese coming right back in this game. Mallory, Abaker, Dawkins inside the Ferry. Now it's Billy King. He kicks it back to Ferry. Was open for a moment, rejected from behind by Mel Kennedy. Picked up by Amaker. Turnaround oh. jump shot will not count. Now, no basket. Offensive foul against the Blue Devils. Now let me tell you what happened here, Marty. I, I happen to follow that one. Danny Ferry got that shot blocked. He thought he'd been fouled. He got really violent with himself and went over and smacked the Virginia player. I mean, it was not a, a big hit. But the foul was away from the ball. The official with three officials calling the game. It was very obvious foul. And Danny Ferry, one of those freshman mistakes. Hey, you got the shot blocked. Get back into the game. Both ball clubs taking turns in some very untimely violations. John Gislin goes to the free throw line for Virginia. Very still talking to the official down there. Gislin missed a lot of last season with mononucleosis. This is a big free throw there. Sheehy did not have quite enough on it. Loose ball picked up by Billy King. Braddock Dawkins knocked away. Blocked. Basket went. Will it 
count. The official Bobby Taylor said it will not, but Lenny now, Wirtz getting right up into his face, and they may count that basket. Well, he's going to say intentionally, he's going to say a two-shot foul. Let's see. Basket will not count. It'll be two shots. Billy King will be on the free throw line. Now, we've got to see this play. Johnny Dawkins going on the inside. Good block by Johnson. Two shots because it was a tap. Stay here. Oh, how about that. He is now one for four tonight, Billy King. He's also kicked in with five rebounds, so while he's had hey, his on the free throw line, five rebounds and two mighty big hits right here. Six minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the game that in all likelihood will go to the wire. Duke leads by one, and we'll be back right after this. There's your score, 55-54, Duke out in front. We've talked about the foul situation quite a bit tonight. It has certainly been pertinent in the way this ball game has gone. Both clubs have players who are in uh, somewhat serious straits at the moment. Mark Allery, most notable as far as Duke is concerned, with four personal fouls. Uh, also, Billy King, while Henderson, Ferry, and Billis have three apiece. John Dishman with four fouls for the Virginia Cavaliers. Olin Polony's playing with three. Here we go again. Virginia trailing by a point. Six and a half minutes on the clock. John Johnson matched step for step by Tommy Amaker. Andrew Kennedy looked inside. Nothing there. Gets it off to Johnson. Tries to spin free of Amaker. Can't do it. And now she he with a turn around and he knocked it in. That was good defense by Duke and it just offset by an excellent turnaround jumper. 13 points for Sheehy. Virginia leads 56 55. Amaker inside the Ferry for the jump. Nice cut. Danny Ferry's had only two hoops all night long and both have been big ones for Duke. Well, he showed uh, some confidence there to take that ball back on the inside. He's an intelligent young man and as time goes on, he can become more of a factor offensive. It is going back and forth with five and a half minutes remaining. Callaway tries to get closer. Puts it up, no good. Henderson is there to clear it off for Duke. He finds Dawkins in midcourt. He tries to grip the defense. Could not do it. And there's a rebound by Polonese. Johnny Dawkins has a lot of ability to take the ball to the hoop, but that was probably not a wise decision on his part. Andrew Kennedy throws up a long jump shot off the end line, and it's Dawkins. took in was actually uh, easier than that one. <laughs> he has scored 18 points and a fine demonstration of one-on-one -on -one basketball. Duke leading by three now at 59 to 56. Foul called against David Henderson. You know, one of the things about Johnny Dawkins that's, that's sometimes overlooked, when you look at him physically, he, he almost looks frail, but I think he has more stamina than any player that I can remember in Atlantic Coast Conference basketball. He can go full tilt without a rest just game in, game out, as well as anybody I've ever seen. Substitutions for the Duke Blue Devils. Mark Gallery returns along with Jay Billis. So Mike Krzyzewski getting some of his horses in for the final exactly five minutes of playing time. Don't forget at the conclusion of tonight's game, join us. We'll be choosing a player from each team as the Holly Farms players of the game. Big free throws here by Kennedy, and he gets the first one. You know, you like the way both of these coaches are using their substitutions. They're keeping fellas fresh, keeping fellas out of foul trouble, and yet not breaking up the continuity of the team. I thought Mike Krzyzewski's game from a coaching standpoint in the Kansas game on the bench was about as good a coaching job as I've seen in a long, long time. The game now stands at a one-point differential on the two free throws by Andrew Kennedy. 59-57, UC Mel Kennedy, he is back in the lineup. He's had a big, big night here at Cameron. Johnny Dawkins, top of the circle, straight away. Ball cleared out by Tommy Amaker. Jay Billis knew where Amaker was. Dawkins trying to beat Callaway. Ball knocked away. Foul call. It's against Tom Callaway of Virginia. Billy really talking about 
Johnny Dawkins and his durability. What kind of professional player will he be? Oh, I think he'd be a great throw. Johnny's got the quickness that uh, the professional ranks require. He's an excellent leaper. Probably the only area of his game that wouldn't be considered excellent would be his ability to shoot the ball from the outside, say the, the 18 to 22 foot shot. But he's so quick, you know he's going to score. He likes to play. He's a winner. He plays hard all the time. He's a can't-miss prospect. 19 points tonight. He's one for three from the free throw line. That first one, a big one, and so is that. 61, 58, Duke by three again. This is going to be an important possession for Virginia, not that any others uh, have not been, but they can't afford to start getting behind five, seven points. And Johnson tries to do so much with the ball. Not a smart foul right there against Tom Amaker. But Johnson tempts you. He, you know, he wants to pound that ball into the floor, and I think Amaker just said, hey, I'm going to try to get a piece of it. Here comes Andrew Kennedy back. He'll replace Tom Calloway as Olin Mullinies goes to the sidelines to talk with his coach, Terry Holland. So three tonight on Tommy Amaker as they really start to pile up, but with four minutes and 26 seconds to go, except for Allery, who can ill afford another foul. Of course, Henderson also has four, so that would hurt Duke seriously should they go out in short order. Johnson looked good on that free throw. I'm kind of impressed also in Virginia when they go to this lineup with basically uh, four inside fellas, how well Kennedy moves to the backcourt offensively. It was a nice job. Well, Virginia getting the job done from the free throw line. Andrew Kennedy hit two a moment ago, and now John Johnson takes his turn to make it one point again, 61-62. Virginia in that zone, trying to match up a little bit. Ball tipped away as Amaker tried to go to Dawkins. Johnson got a hand on it. Amaker will put it up. Big basket for you. Tommy Amaker in double figures. He has 10 points. And Duke refusing to buckle as Virginia continually comes back to cut the deficit to one, only to see Duke not one home at the other end. It's 63 60. And there's Bell Kennedy. Duke's trying to play a little zone. They'd rather be in the man to man, but they have foul problems. They know they have to have a little fatigue problem in the front court. They don't want Allery to pick up that fifth. 63 62. Mal Kennedy with 20 points for the Virginia Cavaliers. Amaker had a notion, elected to give it up to Allery, gets it right back. Virginia's given Amaker the shot. As he proved just the last time down the court, he will take it. There's Allery. Tip in goes. Who got it, Allery or Phillips? In either case, they were both really up on the board as well. well. One of the two tipped that shot in. And Virginia leads 65 to 62. Allery gets credited with a tip in. Duke in front, 65-62. Oh. Long jump shot. The tip failed to go from well away from the basket, and Duke claims a mighty big rebound and a mighty big miss for the Virginia Cavaliers. Well, for college basketball fans, last year at this time, what would we be seeing? We'd be seeing a four corner, somebody right. holding the ball. Now, Duke's going to pull it back out a little bit, try to take some time off the clock before they go in and shoot. Virginia's going to say, as opposed to last year, we'll let you do that right now. We like our position. Well, they've knocked off 25 seconds off the shot clock. 2.35 remaining in the game upon the timeout. Duke in control, 65 to 62, with this break in the action and will return after 562 with 235 remaining in the game. And when the timeout is over, they will maintain possession of the basketball. Tonight's game brought to you in part by Mazda Cars and Trucks and Holly Farms. Well, Billy, you talked early on about the feeling by both coaches, Terry Holland, as we look at the Virginia coach, and Mike Krzyzewski, this game might well go to the wire, and uh, right now it looks very much like it'll do just that. And I think it's proved two things to uh, people watching this game tonight. Yes, Duke is a ball club that'll be very difficult to beat. They've got all the ingredients of a fine top 10 rated team, and Virginia is an underrated club. I, I will be very surprised if Virginia isn't in the NCAA tournament this year, and I think they're going to be a factor. It'll be tough to handle. Dawkins fires. Good Long this. Allery was there with position inside and was fouled by Olden Polony. Virginia in the zone had a hard time getting Allery boxed out. Polonese realized that he was, he was not positioned to get inside on Allery. 
Well, second half, as far as free throws are concerned, both clubs have improved their lot. Duke has been perfect from the line here in the second half. Five out of five. Virginia, seven of nine. Allery, an 81-plus percent free throw shooter. Gillis got in a little early on that one. When you've got a fellow that shoots that well from the foul line, you have to really be careful not to step in the lane too early. Tom Calloway comes back in for the University of Virginia in between Mark Allery free throws. So Duke leads by four. Virginia gets it back with two minutes and 24 seconds on the clock. Duke stays in the zone. No need for Virginia to rush things right now. Let's see what kind of patience they show. We talk about a big time down the floor. This indeed is just that for Virginia. Andrew Kennedy looks low. Polonese checked by Phyllis with help from Allery. There's Polonese. The shot rejected from behind. Look at Andrew Kennedy. And Virginia takes a wise timeout. His first field goal and that shot coming with exactly two minutes remaining has cut the Duke lead to only two points at 66-64. Well, our Holly Farms players of the game, Mel Kennedy of the University oh, of Virginia. I, oh, I didn't think that was right. Now, I'm going to argue with you on that one, Marty. I said we ought to pick Kennedy and let the fans uh, make their And choice, I agreed huh? with you. <laughs> who, who, who put in there Mel, then? I, I think the Kennedys ought to share that uh, MVP award. i tell you what, it's really tough on Andrew to Kennedy not to give it to Mel. Okay, well. One or the other. Mel Kennedy, UVA, Johnny Dawkins, Duke. Holly Farms will contribute $1,000 to the Atlantic Coast Conference to be distributed among the member institutions under a conference-approved plan. Once again, our Holly Farms players of the game, Mel Kennedy from UVA and Johnny Dawkins from Duke. I'm going to boo the truck on that one. Boo truck. Yeah, that's right. I, I, I think we should have just put up Kennedy because both of them had uh, a really a fine night. So we're officially on record. There's no question about that. Mel Kennedy's had a big night scoring-wise. As you take a look at the timeout situation, Duke three, Virginia has had two. Andrew Kennedy, who has had how many rebounds? Ten in the ball game, and just prior to that Virginia timeout, hit the big field goal that puts this game at a two-point encounter as Mike Krzyzewski really goes to coaching in that Duke cuddle as they get ready to come back onto the floor. And when you think about the importance of this game, we're just in December, but, you know, games now obviously just as important as those down the wire in February when it comes to league play, when you start talking about the seeding in the tournament. You cannot afford, as tight as the league will be this year, to lose any of those games at home if you expect to be one of the guys up in the top of the pack. Well, Mike Krzyzewski not happy at all about the fact that he's playing a conference game before the 1st of January. Uh, he's had Virginia come in here for the first of the two meetings two straight years because Duke is in the first day of what they call a reading period. They begin their exams next week, and none of their athletic ball clubs can travel during this time. In fact, the athletic teams have to get special permission to even play. But he would prefer after this year to play all of his conference games after the first of the year, and that will be the case next season. Duke spreading it out now, trying to isolate Johnny Dawkins. He's got Kennedy one-on-one -on -one situation. I don't know if Kennedy can handle him that far from the basket. 90 seconds remaining in the game. Duke content to burn some time off that shot clock and, of course, a game clock with a two-point lead. Amaker makes his move. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Henderson with a turnaround. Boy, he's a gifted player. He has 20 points, and, boy, that put a hurting on Virginia. 68-64. Still a lot of time. Virginia showing patience. Callaway fakes to Mel Kennedy, now gives it up to him. Callaway's got to penetrate a little bit to isolate some of those defenders. 55 seconds to go, 24 on the shot clock. Callaway, Mel Kennedy, high posting it off to Sheehy. Kennedy goes baseline, he couldn't get it. Allery rebounds. Duke in the driver's seat with 42 seconds to go. Obviously in a position now, they don't have to worry about putting up any more shots. Virginia almost has to foul now. Foul call indeed on Olden Polony, or rather Mel Kennedy, checking Donnie, Johnny Dawkins in open field, and that stops the clock with 29 seconds to go and puts Duke on the free throw line. Not only puts Duke on the free throw line, but Johnny Dawkins, a 90% free throw shooter. Dawkins has scored 20 points tonight and is on the line where he missed his uh, first attempt and has since hit three in a row. 
And for Virginia, you've got to get the ball up quickly. Call another timeout to stop the clock if you can. But if Dawkins keeps putting these uh, nails in the coffin, it may be too little too late. Now Richard Morgan. We take a look at this freshman out of Salem, Virginia, for the first time in the game. He replaces Andrew Kennedy. Duke puts nobody on the line. Obviously, they're not required to do so. They want everybody back defensively. The one thing you do not want to do now, if you're Duke, you do not want to commit a foul. They lead by six, Ball and down. Morgan coughs it up as he drops it over the sideline. Well, he just came into the game. First time he touched the ball in ACC competition. He just wasn't ready for it. Coach K calls timeout for the Duke Blue Devils. 25 seconds to go. Duke in front by a half dozen, 70 to 64. Stay with us. Well, 25 seconds away from maintaining their unbeaten record. They'll go to 8 and 0, while Virginia will suffer its first loss, a record of 4 and 1. But I'll tell you one thing: Duke knows they've been in a tussle here tonight. Virginia's given an outstanding account of themselves. When I see this alignment out here, I think of the day that Duke lined up to have a win over the University of North Carolina. The very same play, and Bobby Jones picked off the pass to go the other way for the big turnaround. All Virginia can do is chase and hope to either force a turnover or commit a foul to stop the clock. Amaker or Dawkins gets it to Henderson, cross courts to Amaker. Only 13 seconds to go. Now it's Phyllis outside to Henderson. They have spread the floor with a shot block off. Six seconds, five seconds. Oh, that'll remaining. be a few shots. And that should be, and it will be. Bobby Taylor holds two fingers aloft on the foul committed by freshman Lance Blanks. Dawkins to go that line again, and there the experience of Duke. Don't let a man foul you. Get rid of the ball as soon as you touch it to the first free man you see. And even though Virginia wanted to commit a foul, they couldn't get to anybody. Well, we talked about Duke's backcourt duo before the game tonight. Listen to these impressive numbers. Johnny Dawkins has scored 22 points. Tommy Amaker has had 13 assists. That puts him at 58 assists on the year. And coming into the night's game, he only had 12 turnovers. And that's phenomenal. Yes, it is. Dawkins picks up his 23rd. Virginia's lead, or Duke's lead, now at 7 over Virginia, 71-64. And it is now 8, and that's probably the biggest lead either club has enjoyed all night long. Two seconds to go. Callaway shoots. No good, and that is it. The Blue Devils maintain at least their lofty number three ranking in the nation as they win their first conference game of the season. For Billy Packer, I'm Marty Brenneman saying so long from Cameron Indoor Stadium where the final score was did 72, Virginia 64. Our next ACC telecast will be January 4th when Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions will bring you an ACC Sports Center at 1 o'clock and a triple header with NC State of North Carolina at 1.30, Georgia Tech and Virginia at 4, and Duke at the University of Maryland at 9 o'clock. Don't miss it. This ACC basketball telecast has been a presentation of the Raycom Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions Television Network. So long for now.